I got a saying on one of my tapes in life knock shit down. Try and land on your back because if you can look up, you can get up. Let your ravens get you back up. I remember when I, I bought the phone from my mother and she came out of the car. When I opened the door, I said, Mom, I think I know these people in this house. That was my first major goal. And then I couldn't conceal it anymore. I said, Mom, I got this for you. And as she went looking at the house and saying, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. No one ever could have convinced me that this could have happened to me. And she looked at me. She said, Leslie, and you caused me so much problem, because the boy, you were always in the stuff. She said, no one could have convinced me that day when I walked in that house. And this lady was holding you and your brother. And she said, ma'am, I want you to promise me two things. And she said, what is it? She says, one, promise me that you won't separate them. He said, I want them raised together. I want them to know each other. I got pregnant while my husband was away in the war, and I can't keep him. I promise me that you won't separate her. She said, I promise I won't. I've never had children. I promise I won't separate her. And she said, promise me that you'll never tell him about who I am because if my husband ever found out, he would kill me. She said, I promise. She said that she gave him to us and and she kind of cried, and she, and she was walking out the door, and she looked at my doctor mother. She said, remember, don't you separate them. She said, I swear to God, I won't, I won't separate them. I'll keep them together. And she said, if I held y'all in my arms, I never had any children of my own. I didn't know how I was going to do it. But I knew with the help of God, I would. And ladies and gentlemen, my mother had a dream of having children and raising us. She didn't know how she's going to do it. You're going to be just like that. If some of you are already there, well, you don't know how. You're going to make this happen. But you just feel within yourself some way, somehow, with the help of God, I'm going to make it happen. Repeat after me, please. No matter how bad it is or how bad it gets, I'm going to make it. But the next thing, ladies and gentlemen, I want to share with you that some of you already know that it's hard. It's not easy. It's hard changing your life. It was hard when just over three years ago in the Penobscot building in Detroit, Michigan, where I was operating my business and I fell on some hard times. And I was sleeping in my office. It was hard coming into the lobby. And the security said, excuse me, Mr. Brown, can we see you for a moment? And I said, yes. And I walked up to the counter, and he gave me an envelope. And he said, would you mind reading it here? And I opened the envelope, and the envelope was from management that said, this is an office tower. It's not a hotel. Please do not sleep in your office. And I said, excuse me, sir. I said, I just work long hours in creating my business. I'm an entrepreneur. And right now, things are bad for me. They're not going to be this way always. And I just asked for the opportunity to continue to operate like I'm doing it. I'm not trying to make this my home. And it was hard coming through the lobby. And sometimes they would laugh. There's a guy talking about becoming successful. And look at it. He's bathing in the bathroom upstairs on the 21st floor. He sleeps on the floor. Him and two other dreamers up there. Look at him. It is hard, ladies and gentlemen, coming to speak to people. And I was facing financial difficulties in my own life. I was behind on my bills and my dreams. And I'm saying to them, you can live your dream. It was hard, ladies and gentlemen. It was very difficult to pick myself up each day believing that I could do it. There were times that I doubted myself. I'm just trying to take care of my children and my mother. I'm not trying to steal or rob from anybody. How did this have to happen to me? It was very hard. And here's what I want to say to you. For those of you that have experienced some hardships, don't give up on your dream. No one could have convinced me by holding on 
by continuing to push forward, by continuing to run toward my dream, that one day I would have my own talk show. It's a long shot, ladies and gentlemen, from Liberty City in an abandoned building on a floor. Never knowing my mother or father, it's a long shot. Being here with you today in the store, in Atlanta, it's a long shot. No college training, labeled educable mental retarder, when I kept running toward my dream. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop running toward your dream.